Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hobart Day. It's the 76 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Second attempt. Last year, we saw the race cancelled for the first time in history. But I'm so excited to be here with you today. We're going to run through a few interviews that I haven't released yet, but there are heaps on YouTube and Facebook. I encourage you to check them out. I'm going to try and do a dock walk. We've seen a few boats start to dock off. And then we're going to show you a little highlights package that we've created. Nice and quick show this morning. A little highlights package uh, just from a few sailors that I've caught up with from two-handed to 40-footers all the way through to the maxis about just what the Rolex Sydney Hobart means to them. On that, let's get straight into what it means to one of the crowd favourites. A shout out to everybody in Brisbane and a shout out to everybody who's watching today, wherever you are in the world. Merry Christmas. But happy Hobart, I'm so excited that we're heading south and well done to everybody that's been involved behind the scenes. I really think this, this will give a lot of people some hope over the holiday season that things may get back towards normal. Here we go with Squark from Blackjack. Squark, uh, pretty much for me, the main thing I want to talk to you about is how integral your entire life is to the sailing industry and just um, what it means to you to actually, potentially, waiting for the gun to go, be heading south on, uh, on Boxing Day. Oh, look, yeah, look, this means a lot in terms of Blackjack and the Blackjack sailing team. Uh, North Sales, obviously, it means a lot to me there. Uh, we make up a huge component of the marine industry in this country and, and uh, I'm really thankful for the owners of what they bring to all the brands and all, all the people that work in the marine industry. It's an it's a adult's grown up industry and it's just getting stronger and stronger and, and, and I'm proud to be a part of that. 100%. I, I think we call it the adult entertainment industry sometimes behind the scenes. It yeah. very much is that. But you're also going south with a bunch of mates. It's, um, it's very much a community, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, this to have last year's race cancelled and then have this one with all the shakes along the way look like it's going to start is an amazing feeling. Mm. Um, I don't think anyone's really had time to think about the race proper. You normally have a couple of days to get your head in the right space. Um, so before we know it, we'll be going upwind in 20, which will be great. <laughs> My pet event, not. But um, yeah, look, just to have this thing go off is going to be great. 100%. I think in, uh, in sailing we probably deserve a Masters in Logistics and it's just adding an extra hurdle. Yeah, yeah, well absolutely. I mean the challenges here uh, have just been like nothing else. Yeah, what would it mean to you if you could pull off the line on his win uh, for, for you, for the industry, for, for, for your owner, Harburg, who's just been a massive supporter? Yeah, well, I mean there's no secret we're here to win this thing. Mm. Uh, that's why we keep coming back because we haven't won it. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be huge. It'd be huge for Pete and, uh, and the boys, yeah. Uh, our team, unlike a lot of teams in this race, is a full professional sailing team. We have, everyone's a professional sailor. And uh, we approach it that way because the stakes are high and we want to win the race. So the depth in our group is um, second to none here. We've got people who have won three America's Cups. We've got people that won the Sail GP last week. Um, you know, we've got Olympians, we've got yachtsmen of all different levels and and pedigrees here and, and you know I'm really proud of that and that team and it's a unique opportunity to put that together. I think some of the media today have been surprised by the relationship that you three skippers have got but when you're out on the racetrack it doesn't matter who's on there does it? you guys switch on as soon as the goes. Yeah look a part of any sport, professional sport, um, you know you're doing a job I mean this is a job for us and and uh, it won't be all pally pally on the water and, and you'll probably see that spill over afterwards as it, as it does, does, has done in the past and that's because this race the stakes are so high and they're not high in terms of prize money what they're high in is we're all industry leaders on each boat and we've all done a bunch of changes to our boat and so what you get at the end of that is the, that your thoughts are validated by a win and that your thinking and your physics and your science is up to speed. So, so it's really about making steps forward in the yachting industry. There's very few things left in yachting that are development sailing and the 100 footers and what's happening here, albeit that Wild Oats and Comanche aren't here, is a group of boats that are developing all the time. So just getting your thinking validated is pretty significant. Just lastly for me, there's obviously a lot of moving parts and 
Sachin's played a big part, but what do you think is going to be the key when you're out there to making sure that Blackjack reaches its full potential and does everything it can to win this race? Oh, look, there's, there's, there's a couple of key points here. The, the first thing is um, when you do anything in sport, everyone gets very red-blooded and, and you, you really want to fight from the beginning. But there's a real art in um, hanging in the fight and being there. You've only got to win at the end. You haven't got to win the first day or the start or anything like that. So knowing how to back the boat back through the night on the first night, these, not so much um, Law Connects, but our boat and Wild Oats, they're like a TP52. They're an inshore boat that we take offshore. So when you get in trying conditions to keep them in one piece is pretty difficult. So that's going to be the key part of it. And then from there, uh, hopefully it's just about who's got straight line speed. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hello, everybody. How are you? I am out on the dock. Let's have a little bit of a pan around the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia here. It's incredible action. A lot quieter than normal though, and I tell you what, that's good, but I'm wearing my mask. Hello. <laughs> Let's see if we can go find some sailors. I've got my COVID safe mic here, ready to go. So a big shout out to everybody helping behind the scenes, by the way. People have started to dock off. So just, there's 80 to, oh look, Gunrunner getting ready to go, if you can see over in the distance. Di Pearson, legendary media manager of the Rolex Sydney Hobart just there. Reeves, give us a wave. Hello. Have a great Hobart. Oh, look, it's Adventures of a Ginger. How are you, mate? You good? good? You? Yeah, yeah, I'm really great good. To be back here. I know, right? Can't believe it. Try to get a boat ready in three months' time after <laughs> lockdown. It's been chaos. Oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> buddy. But I mean, what are you heading south on? Uh, we're on Blink. Perfect. Yeah, so doing well in the series at the moment, hoping to finish it out well. So oh, beautiful. I just want a jug of rum and a scallop pie in a few days. That's all I, I'm asking for. I just want a negative COVID test. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want. That's the yeah. aim of the game. Great Have a great over. Great Thanks, to see you too. Kick care. ass. Thank you. Excellent. Cheers. All right, on we go. Look at this. Enchantress. How are we? We ready to go south? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, here's my favourite. We'll see if we've got Shane on here. Excellent. Shane. Shane, yes. get up here. I told you I'd get you. Oh. How you going, buddy? Ah, good. We're ready to go. Yeah, excellent. And what, what's your prediction for this year? Win. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> this is the winner right yeah, here, yeah. ladies and gents. No, I think if everything goes right, and um, uh, at least now, you know, it looks like we've got a good favourable forecast, so it just depends what's happening on the track. The best thing is it doesn't suit the big boats. Yeah. So I'm um, very happy about that. 100%. And, uh, now tell me about this beautiful boat. We talk about it every year, but it's worth it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 40 years old, but um, um, virtually been rebuilt, so uh, it's as strong as brand new. And uh, if you're going to be out, you know, the next 36 hours, if you're going to be out in a bit of weather, rather than these uh, lightweight boats, uh, this would be definitely the perfect boat to be on. And we're looking forward to it. 100%. And for all those who don't know, navy blue boats are the fastest. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and extra polish. Yeah. The stainless, everything. It all adds up. 100%. <laughs> it really does. Well, good luck, mate. Thanks. I'm, I'm going to be waiting for you on the dock. Okay. Yeah, excellent. See you <laughs> we'll see you soon. Let's go get Gunrunner and we'll get, get him to give us a wave over here. Isn't this fun? I feel like we're free. Camel. Woo! Speedwell. You're going to kick butt. Excellent. Gunrunner, give us a wave. Hello. Excellent. All right, let's go down a arm and, and have a little bit of a look. Gunrunner is a classic, everybody. If you haven't seen it before, Australian Army, support those who support us. Excellent. Well, loving being loved. Lincoln June, his interviews on Facebook and YouTube. Hello, how are you? Excellent. Righty, down a arm. Let's get into it. Do you know, in a normal year though, we wouldn't be able to do this at this time. There is no way we would be able to walk down here. It's quite amazing, really. Nautical circle. Here's Blink. Hello. Have a great run south. Bonzi, Bonzi, Bonzi. <laughs> He's not here. Okay, all right. The original Wild Oats. Oh, someone going up for some last minute prep. Excellent. Hello up there. 
Beautiful. They hate me right now, don't they? Excellent. Chancellor, hello. This is really fun. <laughs> I like my pink pants, everybody. I was going to put my skirt on. I didn't have time. I've been too busy. Excellent. Oh, that Santa looks a bit crook. I like that he's got a port and a starboard eyeball, though. This is good value. Who's this? Fruit salad. Spelt properly. Hi, fruit salad. How are we? We ready to go south? Excellent. That's what we like. Where are you guys from? Not Melbourne. Did you leave there during the pandemic or what? Excellent. I love it. Good stuff. Good luck, everybody. Have the best race. Oh, look, a fellow media man. Hi, media man. Hi. <laughs> Perfect. Now we're getting towards the bigger boats here. How are we going, Tom? Got Tom Herbert Evans on the back, everybody, for those who might know. We've got a Bermudian in there. Mayfair, how are we? Saviour, legend. <laughs> Perfect. In we head. Oh, awesome. Look at this beautiful drum fire over here. Wouldn't you like to go south on that? Yes, please. Apparently they watch Foxtel on the way down. Bloody brilliant. Righto. Oh, look at this stunner. Patriot. Old school racing. That sounds fun. It's a bit crowded up here, Tommy. Hope everybody's enjoying this action. I can't actually see any of your comments right now, but I'll check them later, I promise. Hello. Wings. Yay. Have a good run, South. Perfect. Oh, this boat's not going to make it. No mast. No, I'm just kidding. They're not entered. <laughs> They've got issues too. <laughs> and we've got Vamp. Hello. Celestial, yay. Crowd favourite. Have a good one, Jack. Sammy. Sammy. Hey. You got enough clothes on? We're live here to Sailor Girl. I'm just checking how much clothing's required. I don't know yet. I'm just sort of uh, putting on a couple of layers. Just a few layers. Yeah. Ready for a blast? It'll be a bit of a chop. <laughs> a bit of sinus clear out. We all need that apparently. So. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we'll be, um, you know, pass down the harbour mm. and then uh, hopefully see a shoot down near Tasmania. Excellent. I just want to say good luck. Yes. Good luck, Sammy. Okay. Excellent. All right. One of the TP52s in the race. Fantastic. Guaylo, another TP52, came second in the last edition. Then across the way, another TP52, just won the Cabbage Island race, which is the last lead up event. Keep on going, heading up here. <laughs> Good luck, Guaylo. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great race, Brownie. Welcome, mate. Yeah, have a chat to me, actually. What are you putting in your in your glad bag here? No, no, nothing. Just uh, <laughs> taking stuff off the boat. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Gonna be gonna be a quick run. You reckon you'll get much sleep? Uh, it won't get much sleep. It no. won't be that quick a run. No, it's not gonna be quick. Gonna be gonna be beating into it most slammy. of the way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But we're in a competitive fleet, so just gotta keep an eye on everybody and try and make sure we get through the troughs cleanly. Yep. Perfect. Well, good luck, mate. Cheers. And um, I'll see you in Hobart. Thanks. Fingers Thanks, crossed. crossed. Well, Welcome, Brownie. Alrighty. Looks like we've got another one docking off here. Now this is the Ichiban 60, not to be confused with the 52, which is leaving from elsewhere. Goatsy! Goatsy, 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 Goatsy! Hello! We're live! Hey? We're live! We're live! Yes! One good leg, one good arm, what could possibly go wrong? Exactly! <laughs> you go, Goatsy. How's the crew going? You feeling good? Yeah, not a good crew. Feeling good? Yeah, good, Barney. good. Hi, yeah. right, Al. I'm you well? Mate. Yeah, you well? Yeah, very good. Excellent. We've got to give the Victorians a bit of love here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I saw a boat back there. we're here, right? A hundred percent. How yeah. did this happen? I'm so happy. It just happened. It's just great. Yeah, yeah. and I'm still, I'm still yet to catch up with you. We're going to have to do it in Hobart. Hobart. I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. Excellent. Well, yeah. you have a good ride, yeah? Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. You're very welcome. Yeah. Enjoy. Where's that jade girl? Jade. 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 I'll come back. <laughs> Jade's doing her 10th Hobart. There goes Zen. Bye, Zen. Good luck, Zen. <laughs> oh, 
Awesome. Here's Rob Greenhouse. Jade! Yeah. Come here. Tenth Hobart. One of few females to actually do it. We've got to have a chat to you. Sorry, we're live, gorgeous. I love your braids. Oh, thank you. Got to try and do something to keep it, you know, in check. Excellent. You excited <laughs> about your tenth Hobart? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Super pumped. So, yeah, you know, it's um, it's a bit of an honour to join the list of some awesome chicks. You know, Vanessa Dudley and Stacey, and yeah, yeah, to yeah achieve this. I'm pretty proud. You seem emotional, actually. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you're doing it with one and, and a half of you too. <laughs> <laughs> Much love. It's a little yeah. stowaway, yep. yeah. Little yep. stowaway. So, nah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's cool. I get to do it with Aaron, my husband. Yes. Barney, my sailing partner. And just, you know, Tony Ellis, this will be his 53rd, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. So Next time, I'm maybe we'll lucky. see you do it two handed? No. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> not that stupid. She's too clever. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Yep. Excellent. Take Thanks. care. All right. Looks like you're docking off. This is great. We've got them just in time. Looks like Whisper's about to go too. JV62. We'll say quick good luck. Or well, maybe not just about to go. See if we can get Rob over the edge. Hey, hey. Hello, Dougie. Hello, Rob. We're live. How are you going? Yeah, excellent. Griff, what you eating before you go? Bit of a burger? <laughs> Egg and bacon. Egg and bacon roll. Excellent. You ready to go? You pumped? All right. Have a good race. Excellent. All right. We might head back down the dock and leave these guys be. You can see it's getting a little bit empty. But I know that um, we um, we have an interview ready with Christian Beck, who is the skipper of Infratrack from yesterday, talking about just how well they are lined up and ready to go. I'll be back in the studio in just a second. Let's hear from Christian Beck. It's a um, nerve-wracking first 24 hours by the looks of it, but you guys should benefit the most out of it. Yes, uh, heavy upwind has always been our core strength. Um, we've bashed through a lot of stuff, we've patched the boat up many times over the years. It's very strong, there's always still a risk, but but, but this is a dream start for us. Can you just answer questions a little bit more towards the cameras? Yeah, sure. I just got you quite profiled Yeah, Thank sure. Thank you so much. No worries. Yeah. Um, mate, the, the two big dogs are missing, is that different feel this year? Look, it's certainly different, um, but it's still a very challenging race and I think not having them there obviously increases all our odds um, and I think that it makes it very exciting for the three of us boats for sure. What are your emotions? Uh, two days out, do you get nervous? Uh, is it just excitement? How do you feel? Oh, look, I do always feel nervous. I think I've never been, I've done three Hobarts before and there's never been an upward leg outside of the harbour. So essentially um, this first day will be pretty rough, um, bashing into waves all day. So it's a bit nerve wracking, but I think, you know, what can you do? You just got to survive the race, I think. Take some seasickness tablets, fire the fingers, <laughs> all the rest of it. I've got some very good seasickness drugs, basically. So. <laughs> and, and here, not just about the sickness, but about you know potentially with the weather, there can be injuries and whatnot. What what are the some of the worst things that you've experienced? Look, personally, I think the most dangerous thing is when you're doing sail changes at night across Bass Strait because it's taking taking your tether off helping move big sail bags. Um, the thing about those boats, they go very fast. So if you fall overboard, it takes a very long time to pull the sails down, start the engine, turn it around. The boat's a long way away before it turns around and gets to you. So there's, there's definitely things to worry about. Um, but obviously we do everything we can. We practice, a guy jumps overboard every year and we practice rescue and sort of thing. You know. Out of you? Are you ever the one that has to jump over? <laughs> no, it hasn't been me, but I should. And normally they do it, they don't even warn the crew, so the guy just randomly jumps off the, over the back and they practice the whole retrieval side of it. You had a great preparation this year through the, um, the Supermaxi Championship. Um, does that put you in good stead, full of confidence, I guess, heading into the race this year, knowing it really is anyone's to claim? 
Yeah, I think the what was good about the Sumaxi, it was a great set of racing and I think it allowed us to test our really large bow sprit with our bigger sails in light air. It was predominantly light air and we were very happy with the results. So we were very happy, you know, that preparation was great for us. Yeah, you're talking about having that heavier boat and we know that the race can be won or lost in the Derwent. Everybody else is keen to see all three of you go in together, but would it suit your boat more to have a bit of a lead on them as you turn the Tasman? Of course, the further we're ahead, the better. But I think I always find, for various reasons, the boats end up very close. They are often following each other, and it's it's a, and if you get ahead, the guys behind you always seem to figure a way to catch you. So it's it it's likely you end up in the Derwent, and I think together, and it does make it more exciting. Um, perhaps more nerve wracking, but certainly more exciting. Have you got a couple of staff members on the boat again this year? Yes, we've got five staff members plus myself, so six you could call non-professional sailors on the boat. It's a tough one for them to, to have a go at, I suppose, with conditions? Yes, well the first day will be tough. The second day won't be too bad, but the first day will be very tough. It's tough as it gets, really, probably. Talking about how tough it is, the seasickness, there's obviously an upside in the reason you're doing it. What is it about the thrill of this race? How do you describe it, the, the buzz and the thrill you get? Probably the best way to say it is, as a kid, I would watch the Sydney Hobart, I'd watch the Bathurst race, and I'd watch the Melbourne Cup. But the only one you can actually compete in is the Sydney Hobart. So for me, it's just being part of a great sporting event. I love it. Um, and I, the way I describe it is it's just, it's an exciting day. The start is, is great. The finish is great. The race itself is actually quite hard work or hard going. Um, but those, those moments are so worthwhile. Back here in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit sweatier, going all the way up to the end of a arm and back. I might even uh, bring in the overall shot for you here. It's obviously looking a lot emptier. The start boats are gone, the mark boats are gone. You might be able to see Celestial leaving in the distance just underneath some of those big flags there. But it's definitely all action. A very quiet dock. I, I can't explain to you, I know it looks busy, but it's incredibly quiet uh, as opposed to years gone by. So excited. Now, a little reminder about what's to come for the rest of our coverage. I'll be live on ABC Grandstand with Chris Rowbottom from 5 to 1 in the cricket break, so that will be fantastic. We will stream that live here on Facebook as we have, it, as we have done in years past. We're not allowed to show you any vision of the start, but we do stream our audio. And then all things going to plan, we will switch to our crew who will be offshore at the turning mark, thanks to Cronulla Sailing Club. But it depends just how rough it is out there. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. They're gonna make a final call at the mouth of the, uh, of the Cronulla Inlet, and we'll go from there. Now, we have one more interview left. Then we're going to go to a package for, which just for me sums up how important the Hobart is to everybody and what it means and what it meant to lose one last year. But here we have David Witt, talking about what the race means to him and his team. They've spent a lot, of team, a lot of time overseas this year and we've been very lucky here in Australia, but it hasn't been an easy year for anyone. Sounds like the first night's going to be a tough one, mate. How do you, how do you think? What are you feeling about? Yeah, it's sort of boat breaking for the hundred footers. So um, just got to stay in one piece and be alive on the, you know, after 24 hours. Um, it's a tough one for the hundreds. A lot of the smaller boats will be be fine, but the hundreds don't like that sort of stuff. So it's a matter of how far you push it to stay, not you know, lead or not be far behind. And if you back off too much, you'll be too far behind. And if you go a bit hard, you you'll be out of the race. So that'll be. Um, That'll be the first, apart from passing the PCR test, that'll be the second big test. You touched on it before, I mean, it's, it's, it's a serious thing, isn't it? If someone fails, it's going to really impact your ability to get down that path. Yeah, well, my wife and I caught COVID really badly this year, stuck in the Philippines, so I, we got pretty first-hand experience about it all. Um, and I'm probably more worried about, I've got 18 guys that have all had to do the PCR test, and it's such a random thing, it can attack anyone. So. Um, I'm probably more worried about that than I have been in the last 24 races. You touched on it briefly upstairs, but I guess you know the negative result now. It's too late, I guess, at this stage to bring anybody else in. Is that right? Yeah. So we uh, we were going with 16, and we decided to go with 18 
expecting maybe t we might lose a couple. Um, but, you know, we, hopefully we're, we're all good, but it you know, could be catastrophic for us. It could be ca catastrophic for anyone. Blackjack's already had a problem earlier this year, so fingers crossed. Moving beyond that first night, which is obviously quite tough, we're looking at lighter winds. Does that suit Skyway? Yeah, yeah, the, the, it sort of, uh, it certainly does. Eight to 15 knots is sort of our, our wind range, so providing uh, info, or oh, sorry, not info track, what are they called now? Law Connect. Providing Law Connect don't get too far ahead, or, um, you know, all three boats are in with a great shot. Is that exciting going into a race like this, knowing it really isn't even playing field as anyone's to claim this year? Yeah, well, I think it's anyone's to play for any year, really. Um, you know, you've got to put it together on the day, and, and, and more importantly for this race, the boats, you've got to keep them in one piece. That's going to be a big test. You've had a great lead up in terms of the preparation through, um, through the Cabin Crew Island and, and in, the, in the big road challenge. I guess, does that fill you with confidence knowing that the crew is ready, the boat's ready, and can you withstand anything? Yeah, well, we're, we represent Hong Kong. We're an international team, right? Um, so we've had to bring out a lot of new guys, Aussie guys, a lot of young guys, and and um, but they've come together really well. We, we sort of just concentrated on getting the, the best group we can rather than doing modifications and sales and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully, uh, you know, the crew can perform and we can get the job done. As Guy touched on up there, it's your 25th race and you head into this one as a favourite. How's that tag stick with you, Dave? Oh, favourites don't win, do they? When was the last time a favourite won the Melbourne Cup? So, no, it doesn't excite me at all being favourite. <laughs> We're the only one that hasn't won sitting up there too, so... Let's see what happens. We a uh, year off last year for the first time for the Hobart, and I know that you love to sail with a bunch of mates too. What does it mean to you to be going south this year after a gap and after such a tough 18 months for everyone? Yeah, but really tough for everybody, not just sailors, like yeah. everybody. So I, I, I just think if we can get this race done without any dramas, it might give some people some normality back in their life, and I think that's what we all need. You know, it's been terrible for everyone. We just got to try and get through this and move on. I think. Do you think you'll, everyone will breathe a big sigh of relief when that starting cannon does fire at 1pm? The race is on and you're heading to Hobart? Well, I think we'll all get a sigh of relief once we get our PCR test back in the next 24 hours. So I'd stay tuned. I'd, I think there's going to be some issues. I can't, you know, it's just so random, isn't it? You know? Has anyone said to you, what if you don't get those results back in time by some of the inactive Good question. Uh, you know, we're, we're the sailors in this race, we're living like everybody else. The rules seem to change every day. You know, we're, we're, we're sort of day by day at the moment, so just fingers and toes crossed we can get across the start line. Does it feel different not having wild oats and Comanche here? Um, yes, I mean, I mean, personally, you touched on 25th race and we haven't won it. You know, it would have been nice to win and beat those two, obviously. But, you know, you can only, you can only beat who turns up and, mate, I'll take it any way we can get it at the moment. There's a distinct lack of international flair, obviously, this year. Do you think Scallywag brings a bit of a different flavour representing Hong Kong? Well, I hope so, because we, you know, we're a Hong Kong team. We're, 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 we're sponsored and backed by Seng Wan Lee, who's a you know, Hong Kong businessman and we represent Royal Hong Kong Yacht Club. So, I'm, my wife and I live in Hong Kong. I'm a Hong Kong resident, so um, I think it does. I, I, you know, it's been an international race for so long now. Um, so, I think to have us in the race in the COVID era we're in at the moment, I think brings something to the race, for sure. For people who watch the city to Hobart but maybe don't necessarily follow it, what's the trickiest thing that you do or is to be a part of the city to Hobart that people don't know about? The trickiest thing is to find some people and companies to fund it. It's a very expensive exercise. That's the trickiest thing. Um, they always say the hardest thing to win the race is to first get on the start line. So that's the most difficult thing. Oh, no, I think it's even harder for the Super Maxis, to be honest. That, that, like I said before, the 100 footers, they don't like the seaway and they don't like 30 knots upwind. So, um, you know, it won't be a, you won't win the race in the first 24 hours, but you'll certainly lose it if you're out. So, we, we, you know, the goal for us is to get to get to the top of Tasman and be in contact with the other two boats. Hopefully all three are still in the race. It'd be great to go up the Derwent against the other two. But you know what, if we're the only one going up the Derwent, that's just fine too. That must be nerve-wracking as a skipper, Dave, to know how hard to push in that first 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit lucky because th this boat was Ragamuffin 100 and I built it for Sid Fisher. So I've been involved with the design right from day one. So um, I should have an idea, but, you know, I'll tell you on the 27th how good of idea I've got.
And we are back at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. We've just been in contact with our amazing pill down at the Cronulla Sailing Club and it's sounding like it's already 20 knots offshore. It's due south, so it hasn't actually gone left yet. And it could be incredibly hard to get towards the fleet given they're, as Chris Wilde said in our interview, which we showed a little bit earlier, they may be heading offshore for six to eight hours. Maybe the maxis will do four hours and they're just literally gonna head out on starboard tack. While we're talking about that, I'll just show you the course. In case you don't know, the Rolex Sydney Hobart starts in Sydney and they head out the heads, take a right turn, which usually means it's gonna get colder and down they go. There's three sections of the race, getting out the harbour uh, in one piece, heading down south to the Derwent and then getting up the Derwent. Now there's a risk of these boats getting stuck offshore if they don't make it during daylight and getting shut down offshore at the Derwent. So not only do they need to make it out the heads, down the coast, join the dots, and then get up the Derwent. Yeah, it's a hard race. And that's why it's on so many people's bucket lists. And speaking of bucket lists and why the race does mean so much, I've put together this little package. You can watch all of these interviews on our YouTube and Facebook channels, but I thought I'd put together the answer basically to the question of what the Hobart means to you and why the Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race is so special. So let's have a look at this little package and then we'll wrap up and let you get ready to watch the start. COVID's taught us anything, it's that those connections are the most important thing. That's right. What did it mean to you to miss last year and what, what does it feel like this year as we've got thunder overhead thunder and we can expect this for the next few <laughs> days, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, it, it's so great to be going. Um, like last year was, of course, very disappointing, but you, know, you just had to accept it because that was the world we're in and yeah. everything was being cancelled and it was just another another disappointment. But yeah. you know, I think we all became very, you know, everybody had some sort of disappointment throughout the last two years. Maybe we've become more resilient. It might I make us so. better ocean races. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I, I think we call it the adult entertainment industry sometimes behind the scenes. It yeah. very much is that. But you're also going south with a bunch of mates. It's um, it's very much a community, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, this to have last year's race cancelled and then have this one with all the shakes along the way look like it's going to start is an amazing feeling. Um, I don't think anyone's really had time to think about the race proper. You normally have a couple of days to get your head in the right space. Um, so before we know it, we'll be going upwind in 20, which will be great. <laughs> My pet event, not. But um, yeah, look, just to have this thing. Uh, look, the it's you know it's a team sport. You know it'd be great personally to, to to have a good result, but I think for the team, you know, having a big absence, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that for sailing in general, sort of globally, that there's been a lot that didn't happen. Um, so it'd be nice to just you know have this race, do well, and have some momentum into next year, and you know hopefully we can keep sailing and, and kick the program back off. Last year it didn't happen, and I know it, it's been a big part of your life. What was yeah. it like having an empty? Oh, in a year. It was so hard because, yeah. you know, we're a real um, grassroots project. Yeah. Neither of us earn a lot of money. Mm. It's a borrowed boat. We had to get up into offshore racing. So we had a we had a fundraiser where people donated and bought things and stuff. And we've had a lot of people donate stuff to us and help us for free. So we've been so lucky. So all that help and then not to go was horrible. But we've just carried it all on this year, you know. We've yeah. just had great sponsors and a lot of help and that's what's getting us there. You're a diehard for this race, you've come back again and again and again, even when we thought you retired you've come back missing one when it wasn't your choice. I mean what does this race coming up now mean to you? Yeah it's pretty special, I mean in the past it's been another year, another year, you go mm -hmm. through the grind, not a grind but you know you, you just do it because it's there to be done but now it's got more meaning to it. You know young Anne, Anne Stewart was up here to do her first race at 18, she was devastated when she, she sailed all the way with me and had yeah. to turn around and go back. Uh, so it really hurt her and she took it well, I took it on the chin and kept going, but it's for people like that and, and myself, it's got new meaning. Having that break has almost made this uh, really special year to, to get back out there again. Yeah, it's and exciting. a lot of people don't realise it's so much about the community and how much you've committed to that crew as a family, mm. away yeah. from family. We uh, gear off last year for the first time for the Hobart and I know that you love to sail with a bunch of mates too. What does it mean to you to be going south this year after a gap and after such a tough 18 months for everyone? Yeah, but really tough for everybody, not just sailors, like yeah. everybody. So I, I, I just think if we can get this race done without any dramas, it might give some people some normality back in their life. And I think that's what we all need. You know, I 
it's been terrible for everyone. We just got to try and get through this and move on. I think. Lovely to sit down with you, Spezzy. It is very much a family, especially after missing the race last year. Ah, oh, it is. And let's let's just focus on that and, and get yeah, it and south the safely. And, yeah. You know, those who are doing their first race, hopefully they'll step up the plate and enjoy it because it is a special event. You know. Yeah. And and the event, Nicole, it isn't about the base. Sure, mm. that's part of it. It's about the people. Hundred so, percent. Yeah, and the we, camaraderie we know that. and all that. So. Excellent. Love you, Speedy. Love you. The old days would have given you a kiss. But not <laughs> I know, we can't do it anymore. <laughs> and, I mean, what does the race mean to you, given how tough the last 18 months have been? Yeah, it, it means a lot, actually, um, just to be here and be involved. It, it's a race that's kind of, I've only been in a few times, but it, mm. it, it's, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it every time. Yeah. And, and I've been lucky, like I used to grow up with my old man, um, used mm. to fly at Christmas Day to come down and do the race. So it, it's been a part of, I guess, our family for a long time. Um, but newer to you? New, very newer to me. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like it's, just, it's been a, it's been a tough 18 months. Like we were excited to do a lot more offshore sailing and a lot more shorthand sailing, but that that wasn't to be. So um, just to be here and be able to race is, is kind of the main thing right now. Absolutely. Well, I just wish you all the best to you and your co-skiffer, and hopefully we'll see you in Hobart. It's still going to be hard for some of us to make it down there. Yeah. I think it might be easier to go by boat. I'm Almost have to, at this stage. I'll yeah. just go and hitchhike offshore and see if I can get a ride <laughs> down with safe somebody. Bet, yeah. yeah, exactly. Awesome. Right. Good Thank luck you. to you. Cheers. You're Thanks welcome. A lot. And especially this race, it's got you know such a legacy with fully crewed boats. But I mean, when you think about the first boat that went to Hobart and won Rani, I mean, that was just a bunch of mates going for a burn. I know, right? Because last year, I know this race means a lot to you. You're the current line honours holder with a, a different boat, Comanche. Yeah. You're now on Willow, the Volvo 70, but you race with your family. I mean, it's been a part of your life for so long. What did it mean to you to miss a race last year? Oh, it was you know, greatly disappointing for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's the city to Hobart, and mm. to miss to miss any one of them is a, is a great disappointment. Yeah. Um, particularly uh, for my son Douglas, who was lining up for his first race last year, so he sadly missed out on that. But um, anyway, back again this year. Excellent. And Liam, what does the Hobart mean to you? I didn't even want to do my first one. <laughs> I actually did it because... So you're that crazy. I did it because one of my mates wanted to do it and I'd never even watched the start. Oh, wow. I've done a lot of sailing. Yeah, I've only been sailing 10 years, so I'm actually quite young to the sport. Well, um, <laughs> So, you know, like, um, I don't know. I, I feel that when I'm here, it's kind of busy and stressful. Mm. But, but I... Ask me in Hobart and I'll tell you how I really feel because after okay. I've had a couple of rums in me, um, I'll, I'll tell you how I really feel about it, you know. Oh, awesome. So I, I, I find it's, it's quite overwhelming. Oh. Um, I'm, I've not been this excited or this concerned for a long time. Oh, Leedon, that's so <laughs> lovely and I'm just so happy that we got to talk to, um, to the whole crew on this yeah. boat at the same time. Well, yeah. There you have it. That is the Rolex Sydney Hobart and just what it means to everybody. Now, you may have seen that snap with Willow, uh, with, Jim Kin with Jim Cooney. Willow has unfortunately pulled out. Maverick 49 has pulled out. Protagonist has pulled out and Min River has pulled out, which leaves 89 yachts. 18 of which are two-handed, which is very exciting. So all of those interviews, I encourage you to go and have a look while we have a little bit of a gap now leading into the start, which will be in about an hour and a half <laughs> from my calculations. I'll be live here with ABC Grandstand, also on YouTube, and we'll see what we can get from after the start. I don't think we'll be going offshore with Cronulla Sailing Club, but we will get a conditions update from them in the very least. So stay tuned here. Then we're heading to Hobart tomorrow. So much action coming your way. A massive thanks to our sponsors, Musto, Harkin, Bole, Willie Smiths, and R&R &R Smith, the organic apple orchard in Tasmania. Cannot wait to get to Tasmania to see all of our friends. And thank you all for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy Hobart. Let's get ready for the start. Oh, I'm so excited. See you soon.